Hey guys, it's May May, and I am so excited today for this Hello Craft. One, because my new stamp set comes out today. But two, because I have discovered something that I am in love with, and I hope you guys like it as much as me. I don't know if you're not very good with your Copic coloring, because I'm really bad. Let me show you. Look how poor that is. It's so bad, and I know you'll be nice about it. I know you will, but I'm learning. At least I'm trying, right? But look at this guy. Do you see the shading in there and the coloring? And it's kind of sepia looking. I'm going to show you today how to do this with one Copic marker. And the color of this one is Pinkish Vanilla R01. I don't think you'd have to only use Pinkish Vanilla, but that's the lightest color I had in my stash. I tried doing it with my big markers, but it doesn't work the same. So I'll show you how that stuff works, okay? But anyway, this is my new stamp set. Let me just show you, get the housekeeping out of the way. This is it. It is called A Bushel and a Peck. And I named it that because when I was little, my grandmother used to always tell me, I love you a bushel and a peck and a hug around the neck. And I love it. And so that's what it is. And it has, I'm trying to do it without a glare. So I'm going to do it that way. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sentiments. They are harvest, fall, hay you, spelled like a hay bale, <laughs> grateful, howdy pumpkin, something to crow about, a bushel and a peck and a hug around the neck and then you get all of these little sentiments which are the scarecrow three pumpkins two hay bales um one two three leaves and a scare and a crow to go with your scarecrow so that's that they are on sale in my etsy store right now they're 10.99 shipping is two dollars and i will link it below okay that part's done now let's do this part i love this little colored guy he is so cute with his little blue little overalls and all that good stuff but I have to show you this technique. I'm so excited. I'm a really, really bad Copic color, but I got to thinking, what if, let me let that focus, what if we could color in sepia hues on craft paper? And let me show you how I tested it. All right, so we're going to work in close proximity here. I want you to see this. This is the way you'll be able to decide which of your markers will work, okay? The first thing I did was think, I want to take this craft paper and have it be two-toned and I thought will my colorless blender do that so I did a mark with colorless blender and in a minute you'll see why that will not work okay then I tried my market markers with a very light peach color kind of a khaki actually I think this is khaki no this is tiki hut tan and you'll see why that won't work I'll show you in a minute then I took a copic and I did this one in the lightest color I had which like I told you was this pinkish vanilla Okay, now it looks as though this one would work and it might work if you're really good with your markets. I'm not extremely good at getting these pieces, these kind of fatter pieces of the color out. And when you hit it with the colorless blender, it kind of works, but not exactly. But this guy blends into the paper so well and you can just kind of do these little, well, wrong end. <laughs> Let's use the brush end. You can do these little flick marks and it just kind of creates a shadow all on its own. How cool. Okay, let me show you how to do it. I'm going to back the camera back out and do some stamping. I'm going to try to keep working pretty close so that you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, that ought to be good. All right, the first thing I did was I stamped the images. Now, here's what's interesting. I took out my Distress Ink, and I had my Memento. I was playing with my Tuxedo Black to do the Copic coloring. And I read to see what this was made of. And guess what, guys? This is a Distress... It says Distress Inks are acid-free, fade-resistant dye inks. Guess what Memento is? I will show you. Mementos are fade-resistant dye inks. The same product. So I thought, this may work. I might be able to color with my Distress Inks. I don't know if anyone's ever done this before. I literally was at lunch and I thought, ooh, I want to try that. So here's how it goes. I took just a scrap piece of paper from my um, scrap pile so I could test it and see what happened. And because I'm going to be stamping several images, I'm going to use my Fisker stamp press so I have a little movement for where they go. And the first thing I'm going to do is start with my scarecrow. Now what I think I will do is do the stamping and put a little music on and just let you guys watch me stamp. That way you don't have to sit here and go watch me stamp all these, but you'll see what I'm doing. And if I do anything I want to tell you about, if there's any tips in there, I'll stop and let you know. But we're just going to stamp these little guys onto our paper. And I'll do this first one with you. One tip is line your paper up straight. Because even if you don't get these guys on your stamp press straight, 
you have some leeway, so move around. So stamp this little guy down. I love this scarecrow. I didn't paper piece him. Are you shocked that I didn't do a paper piecing? This was my favorite. All right, I'm going to stamp away and just let you guys watch. So this is the beginning of the piece. In a minute, I'll show you how I put the leaves and the scarecrow and all that on. But for now, we're going to start with this. Let's zoom in. Okay, I really want you to see how I'm going to do this. What you're going to do with this technique is you're just going to color in. Let me put this in so you can see the color. You're just going to color in the shadows. That's all you're going to put in. So like at the top of his hat, I'm going to come out here and just kind of flick inward to put in where the shadows would be. And if you're not very good at Copic coloring, this is forgiving. Because <laughs> you're not having to blend colors, you're just blending a shadow. Now, I will tell you, the way I'm, my angle I'm having to color here is not the best. But don't worry. See how dark this looks right now? It looks like I'm just kind of blobbing this up, but I'm not, I promise. You'll see it fades in. So let's go in here and do this. And come down here. Now remember, I'm a shaker. You're probably not a shaker. And I, like I said, I'm in a bad angle here. So you can do this neater. Also, don't forget, turn it where you need to turn it. I have a hard time talking and coloring. And see, I'm just kind of flicking that up, and it will kind of blend itself in. And take it up as high as you want. Okay, then let's do this side. I'm going to show you up close. Do you see what that's doing? It's kind of putting a shadow and a highlight in for us. And we're not having to do much. Now for the places that you want to be pretty saturated, like his nose, I'm just going to color that in solid. This pocket, I'm going to color in solid. This patch the wood that he's sticking on because he's a scarecrow and he has a piece of wood to stick on. Color that in solid. Then I'm going to, like on the hay bale, the same thing. It's darker out to the outside. So we're going to color it and then flick in. Flick in just like this. I just think this is so neat. I love this technique. Because I love the rustic look and the vintage look. And I do this on the inside just to give me a little bit of the feel of the hay. Okay, now let's do a pumpkin. Here's what I do for the pumpkin. I come to the top and I just kind of flick down and it will give it the feel of being rounder. You know, because your highlight and the best thing to do, I'm at such a bad angle, the best thing to do is to come underneath or at the bottom and flick inward to give you that feel of round. I'm really doing this pretty sloppy, but you're going to be able to see um, how easy this is to do. I don't ever want to color any other way but this. I'm serious. I think this, um, well, one thing is I loved craft. I always have loved craft paper. And then one of the things I like about it is doing like two-tone of craft. So I thought, I wish I could figure out how to do coloring in just this two-tone and get this sepia look. If you have ever seen somebody else do this, I am sorry and give them credit because I don't know. Um, so I don't know who to link you to to say this is who did it the first time. All right, so there is that. That is all of that part done. Now I want to show you this. You see how quick that went? And notice I did not use my colorless blender at all. I don't need it. Look, you don't need it. It does it for you. Ugh, in 
love. Okay, the next thing I did was I took, for example, the Scarecrow from my stamp set. Look how dirty my fingers are from stamping. Ugh. Do y'all get like that? Because I do. Okay, and I inked it straight up with Vintage Photo because I thought it would be neat to play in this two-color scheme again. And I'm going to stamp him on the top of his hat. Like he's just sitting there. Press that in. See this character? Oh, I love it. The other thing I did, this is how I get dirty. Look, I just immediately, I don't even wipe them off. I'm so bad. Okay, the next thing I did was take the small leaves, which you can probably not even see on this stamp press. And then I just put them in different places. Like, let's have this one coming off of this pumpkin to be a little different this time. So that one there. They're a little bit big for the pumpkins, but I think they work. I mean, they're just leaves. And one thing I want to do before, well, let me do this one one more time. Let's see, where do I want to put it? No, I don't want to do it yet. Okay, the other thing I did, and I'll show you on this one. I wanted to have kind of some ground. Can you see the color at the bottom there? So all I did was take that same marker, not the brush tip. I mean, not the chisel tip, but the brush tip. That's what I use. And then I just came out here underneath and did kind of a messy line underneath to give it a place to kind of be landed on and have shadows and anywhere you want to add a shadow and it looks really dark now but when it fades out it's just a light little color so do that now I'll go back to this leaf and I'm gonna put one over here let me see how it's laid on here oh it's tiny okay let's put a leaf out here and you just play with this part just lay these wherever you want to take this little guy off I will clean these stamps I promise I, I know but I'm really bad about that but I will go back and clean them I'm gonna put a leaf on this pumpkin coming off of it and I like doing the leaves in the dark in the full color because I think it looks kind of neat because you can see them so well then I think I'll put a leaf at the bottom here and it also kind of knocks the, the image back because you're bringing that dark to the front. I think that looks pretty cool. All right, and now let's do the other leaf, which you could so load these up at the same time. I just like to kind of be very picky about where I put them. I'll put this guy here. Just kind of laying at the bottom. Like that. And maybe one more over here I love it now the only other thing I did well there's two other things I did I put a sentiment and I'll do that here I used a bushel and a peck so I'll put that down you can't see this I'm inking it with my vintage photo the same one I've been using so really it's just two inks it's your vintage photo and your um, Copic marker Stamp that in place, and then, okay, now I'm ready to trim this down. This piece is a little too big. Like I said, it was a scrap piece that I got, and I just wanted to use it up. So I'm going to let you look at that for a second. What do you think? Do you like it? I think it's a neat technique, and I love the way it looks for fall and, you know, autumn-themed cards. I'm going to back out so we can assemble the card. Okay, now I've got it cut down so it's a little better for my card. I cut this to three and a half by four and a half, and now I'm going to ink the edges using one of Mike's ink blending tools from his store. By the way, they have a brand new store. Go check that out. It's Tupelo Designs LLC on Etsy. You guys know Jane and her husband Mike have opened a new store, and these are in it. So everybody always asks me where I get these, and I love them. If you have these, leave in the comment below how great they are because I think they're wonderful. Okay, so inking this guy up, and I think that brings out the color even more, and then we're going to put it together. Do you see this orange paper in the background, Has it ha how it has little polka dots on it? Let me show you what I did for that. I cut the paper to size, and I have this polka dot background stamp. I don't remember, let me see if I know who it's from. It's by Doodlebug Design. The only thing I don't like about it is it is an acrylic stamp and not a photopolymer, so it really is very givey you know it presses really easy 
but no biggie. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to polka dot this paper because I want the edges to be polka dot that are showing. So do that. Do this edge. This is probably not going to be perfect at all. I cannot get over it because I'll block it. See how it's messy, but it won't show. You guys just wait and see. It'll be fine. And do this side. Then this little corner. Don't worry, I promise it'll look all right. Never fear, never fear. Okay. Oh, I closed it up too soon. Now what I want to do is ink the edge of this paper. So by using the same ink on colored paper, we've tied these two together because we, the, cup, the ink ties those together. So there's one piece. Now let's do the card base. And this is an eight and a half by 11, cut in half. Then I'm gonna score it at four and a quarter. Now on this one, all I'm gonna do is ink the edges. Now I wanna ask you, can you imagine going to a crop or doing a class with some ladies and teaching them how to color with one Copic and get the sepia look? Wouldn't that be fun? I think this would be super cool to do, like if I was doing a crop or teaching a class, I mean, it would be so easy, like bring paper, bring your craft paper and bring one Copic marker. I have not tried this on any other paper. If I did, I'm sure I'd get this color as my shadow, which would probably be fine. But I just love how it looks on here. Let's assemble this guy. So easy to assemble and so fast to do. And I want to show you this one we just did, okay? This one I did about 45 minutes ago, and see how the color is still there. It just works. I love this look. I hope you guys enjoyed this one Copic color technique. Craft paper and Copic, and don't forget the star, kind of the star of the show this time was Distress Ink too, because it just really works. Let me know what you think, guys. If you like color in sepia, this is the way to go. And that might not be the right name for it, but I think it works. Oh my goodness, do I have some stuff to tell you. Okay. I received so many packages in the mail over the weekend from you guys. I cannot wait to show you that. I'm going to film that tomorrow and show you guys what all I got and um, show you some beautiful work by some just really talented crafting artists, okay? So look forward to that tomorrow. We may see some videos like Monday and Wednesday be, be fall themed also because I've had some requests for some fall stuff. So if you guys don't mind, we're going to keep doing fall um, decorating even or fall crafts even though it's Monday and Wednesday. All right, guys, there's the craft for today. I'm so um, excited about this one. I really like it. And if, and if you're interested in the stamp set, go check it out below at the link on my Etsy store. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will talk to you guys next week with some more fall crafting. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.